Okay, so today I just wanna give you a couple quick tips in how you can deal with clients or assess clients who are injured or experiencing pain. Now this is something you're gonna come across at some point in your career. It might be a new client you've took on and they've said, look, before we get into sessions, I haven't had injury in my knee or my back in the past, or they're currently experiencing pain and niggles at some part of their body. Or it may be a client you've trained for years and they've come in after a weekend and their back's hurting or their shoulder's hurting or they've got problems with their neck. It's something we're gonna experience at some point in our career. So something I'm really passionate about is helping personal trainers get a little bit more knowledge in helping people who are experiencing pain. I suppose ultimately being able to offer a bit more value there. So where do we start? So the first tip I can give you is questions. Learn to ask good questions. I'm always banging on about this with people who I mentor and something that I made a big mistake on in the past is probably not spending enough time asking questions. And I would say, me, like a lot of trainers, you feel quite pressured at first to get a client into the gym floor, you know, work them hard, get them sweating, and you feel like you're not offering enough value unless you've sort of smashed them up. But as I've got older and more educated, I've actually realized for me to be a, a good quality coach, I need to learn as much about the client as I can, and I can only do that if I learn to ask good questions. So of course, in the initial consultation, we're asking questions. But even, again, I said earlier, clients you've trained for years, you can still ask good questions. And let's think about the pain example. So let's think about a client who you've trained for years and their lifestyle's been different than last week. Maybe their stress levels have gone up. Maybe their nutrition's changed, they've got some sleep deprivation going on. Something in their lifestyle has changed. Sometimes at activity levels, maybe they've taken up a new sport. Maybe they've suddenly decided to play golf and played that for a couple of years. Or they've been in the garden for three or four hours. Whatever it might be, let's ask some questions. What's changed? What do you feel as a client is causing you pain right now? Are there certain movements that are causing you pain? Understand a little bit more about them that's gonna be a really good place to start before you've got them on the gym floor. Because from that, guys, you can tweak and go, look, I recommend if we can start to get a bit more sleep or optimize sleep hygiene, that can really help you. Or you know what, rather than doing five hours of gardening, maybe next weekend you just do an hour. You know, reduce that. So it sounds like common sense, but really ask these questions and you're gonna offer a lot more value. Okay, so second part, second part is obviously gonna be our, our bread and butter as trainers is gonna be the movement assessment. And this is where I just wanna give you a couple of tips today about things we can think about when we're looking at clients moving. So first place I would start off at is understand that movement assessments or general assessments can look different from person to person. So think a lot about the client's goals, their ability levels, what they're trying to achieve in the gym. All these things can look totally different. Now, if, you know, if you're like me, you've probably got a mix of clients. So I've got some clients that are a bit younger, got more physique-based goals. Some clients are a lot older, maybe they're working with injuries and pain. So I'll assess these clients totally differently. So let's make it individual. Then let's think about, okay, well, what can I specifically look at? Well, I'll be looking at compensations, first of all. So you could be looking at, the, could be walking, it could be squatting, it could be you know, some single leg balance stuff. It could be some, you know, some body weight drills, whatever it might be, are they stronger on one side than another? Look at the motor control. So if it's like the knee, for example, there's little things you can do, like little circles of the knee or circles of the ankle. Have a look at the control in that joint. What you might wanna do is actually get your hands on the joint. Now have a look, so let's use the ankle joint. If, I, if I'm looking at an ankle joint and I'm looking at motion, I'll passively get my hand on that joint and create some circles, a little bit of pronation, supination, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Have a look, is there different side to side? Is certain movements causing pain? Then I'll have a look and see, well, can the client actively use some of that motion? And very often I see people who are experiencing pain, there's a difference between the passive and the active. Then we can think about, okay, well, could we do some weight bearing stuff? Okay, what is causing them pain? Are there certain exercises maybe you're looking at with the ankle joint that's causing a disruption in how they move? So they're starting to sort of become quite maladaptive and can compensate and use more weight on the other side. They may be using the hip, maybe more than the knee and the ankle if there's been pain in there in the past or if they've got pain in around the ankle joint currently. So you've got motor control. You're looking for compensations and you're looking for areas that cause pain. We don't want to trigger pain. We want to try and work in and around it, I suppose. So you're trying to work right up to that tolerance level. 
So if I've got a client who is experiencing, again, going back to the ankle joint as an example, I'm gonna work right up to that tolerance level. Where can they get to with that range of motion that isn't quite causing, quite triggering pain? Now I'm gonna hold it there. So after you've done this movement assessment and you've asked them a few questions, think about giving them two, three, maybe four take homes. Maybe one or two lifestyle things and maybe one or two movement drills. That's more than enough. I know in the past I've been quite guilty at kind of information overload and I'm still quite guilty of it now. Even when I'm coaching other trainers, I'm, I go a bit berserk. So one, literally two or three points, maximum four, that's more than enough. So next time you get a client in with some pain, think what questions you can ask them. Ask them a few questions, especially about their lifestyle, especially about what they perceive is causing the pain. And then think, okay, once you've listened and you've responded, then assess a client's movement and learn to tweak. Learn to tweak is gonna be your friend. The better you get at tweaking exercise and tweaking movement, the more skilled you're gonna become as a coach.